Hello and welcome to this week's episode of the TF Cast. Today with us, we have artist Beth Ann Hamilton, who is here today to talk about her installation at the 410 Project, the first since their reopening, Domestic Multiplexity. Beth, uh, please tell us a little bit about the project itself, the dates, and uh, just like what's going on over there. All right, so my show, Domestic Multiplexity, will be on Friday, so just in a few days, the 6th, at 7 to 9 p.m. at the 410 Project. I'll be showing a bunch of my mixed-media fabric portraits. I got a grant from Prairie Lakes Art to do that. I've had one year to complete my stuff, and I finally got everything put together, so it's a good feeling. So I'll be showing those and some uh, smaller scale projects that I've also been working on the last year. And you said that you this is your first showing since you um, graduated from the university here in town? Yeah, so I was supposed to have my big uh, graduating exhibition. Everybody has one for the art program, but mine happened to be on the same day that the state shut down for COVID. So. Oh, oh, like in March? <laughs> yeah, March 16th. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> what 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 ended up happening there um like you just did was it like put before a review board or something or so i had two options i was going to do my review through google photos but it turns out that you can't get responses right away from mm. like the online platform so i ended up doing my review on facebook so <laughs> yeah that was quick i mean that that's like a that's like the most pandemic thing I've ever heard, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> yeah, I got my graduate degree through Facebook. Yeah. Well, Hey, and what is, what is like uh, for like a, a person coming out of college and like starting out as like an, an artist who's not in an, an academic institution anymore. What, what's that been like? Well, I've been doing shows for quite a while now, so it wasn't too much different except, uh, I do like being in a situation or being around other people where I can talk to them about my project so I can be like, is this working? Mm -hmm. Is that working? Do I need to edit more? Mm -hmm. So you really have to do everything on your own instead of being like, oh, can you come help me uh, put up my show? No, I'm an adult now. I have to do it on my own. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Have, have you found any um, like resources or like other ways you've been adapting to that? Or have you just been like putting it all upon yourself? Well, I did put on Facebook. I'm a very Facebook-oriented human. You can find a lot of help. You can find community through there. Um, mm -hmm. It's healthy if you allow it to be. So I did put a call out to see if anyone could help me put up my show, but the coordinator of the gallery was able to help me put that up. Big shout out, Dana. Nice. So uh, what the the name of the show is uh, domestic multi multiplexity, right? Mm -hmm. And can you can you uh, tell tell the folks what multiplexity means? Multiplexity is a big fancy word for the inner multi multifaceted um, relationships that you can have in one subject. So my show is mainly about the human body and images that you might have on your cell phone that you might share with somebody else. Maybe you never share them with anybody, but I am asking for images from people that I know personally so I can show them in a more fine arts-oriented style. So I'm taking these images that you hide and I'm making them larger than life so that people can see how beautiful they are and see how normal they are. Mm. So... Uh, for maybe like a lot of this stuff is like a uh, boudoir or nude stuff. Um, mm -hmm. Like, is it, is it important to the, the, the work itself that it be captured on a cell phone or is it like, is that like part of it that it is people who are like generating these things on their own? I don't think it's cell phone oriented really. It could just be that it's something that people are doing all around you that you might not be aware of. I think it's a generational thing. Um, this project really started because I was trying to show people what my art looked like or what my phone images looked like through art. Mm. So I had done this project like, oh, what was it, two years ago, where I thought having my phone gallery displayed in an artistic form would be a really cool thing to show. And you're supposed to do avant-garde stuff. So I was like, oh, nobody gets to look at my personal phone gallery, so I was going to make it for somebody else to look at. But when I did so, I had, like, plant images, dog images. I had pictures of my house. I had all kinds of stuff. But then I also had pictures of my family. 
And I also had pictures that people had been sending me for another series I was doing for collages, small collages. So I had human images, you know, nude portraits that my friends had sent me. And so when I laid them all out side by side in this grid on these little tiles, so it looked exactly like my phone did, but I had made it for the community, for other people to see. It really bothered people that I had all of the images like showed side by side, like it was really disgusting for them to see that. Hmm. So I decided to focus instead not on my whole phone image gallery, but I decided to do like the images that bothered the people the most. So I ended up taking those smaller pictures that people had been sending me for a smaller project, and I decided to make them really big, really colorful, and really elaborate. And I feel like the uh, the backstory is important to me. Uh, it's important that the images came from somebody's phone, from their lifestyle, but it could have been, you know, camera, could have been their mm -hmm. computer, what have you. Yeah, that's really, it, it's really interesting, because like when, when you tell that story about how it was displayed, I, I have to wonder, if if part of it was how it was displayed you know like kind of like seeing that alongside those other things like those domestic or like the animal thing or like kind of like imagining like what might be in other people's phones that they might not feel comfortable with or something like that do you think that the that kind of like when you blow it up and make it larger do you think that it's going to garner the same type of reaction no i think that it'll get a much uh friendlier reaction from the other people from the audience i think the pink the thing that upset somebody was i had my family images next to an erotic image and that's something that you're not supposed to do it really affected that person who openly told me that i really needed to think through my artistic process and so i was like well mm. i don't want to make anyone uncomfortable that's not my goal in fact that's opposite of what i want to get done so i took the images that i liked the most those mm. collage images the other people's body images and yeah do you, do you see like an art art show as like a little bit of a I don't know if it's like a throwing the noodle at the wall and kind of seeing seeing what happens too. Like, was was there an element of experimentation with your your decision before, and then the way that you thought about doing it again next time? I feel like all art is an experiment. You know, some people would say that their projects are not linked together. It's all one large science experiment. Mm. Yeah, I threw the noodle at the wall. Somebody said it was awful. You're not supposed to throw that noodle next to the other noodle. But mm -hmm. Yeah, this one doesn't bother me as much. I hope it doesn't bother anybody else. I'm really here to make sure that people feel appreciated. You know, I'm supposed to be here to help mm. share my experiences, my insights to my generational, you know, phone. I'm always on that phone. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. That's a, that's actually like quite the statement about art, you know, like that you're here to help. <laughs> um, <laughs> is that is that something that you've always carried with you or is that something that you picked up along the way? I'm not sure if I've always been there to help other people. You know, art really helps oneself. You get your ideas out of your head onto a paper or platform. So, no, I'm, I'm not here to fix anybody else's problems. I'm here to vent mine. And this is a really big one. I don't want people to look down on other people for enjoying being alive. Everyone has a body. I'm in my body 24-7. I can't get out of it. Mm -hmm. So... I really enjoy the images that I can take of myself. I think that other people should feel comfortable with the images they can take of themselves. What? How do, do you consider? Uh, how how do you consider the photos that we take with our phones too? Because I've thought about this a little bit myself also, and and the ability to go out and take a, a pretty good photo, high resolution, like whatever, on your phone is kind of a wild and new thing. Do you? Th think of that like i don't know if it's some kind of a diary or like journalism or docu documentary kind of things i don't know if you how you think about that idea i think everything that you want to save even if it's just into a you know a gallery that's never printed you're you're saving that moment you're saving the idea mm -hmm. maybe it's so you can remember it later on um everything you do is really a journal entry isn't it the music you listen to, your favorite color, your favorite movie of the time. Um, images are really strong things. I think that it plays a big part of my life. I have a lot of different photo galleries. I have tons of folders, you know, mm -hmm. for different projects, for different aspects of my life. So, yeah, I would say that 
It's not so much that I'm writing an entry for other people to read. I just want people to be comfortable that I am doing something for myself. Hmm. Do, do you hope that uh, people see your work and are inspired to share more of their own too? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah every time somebody sees my, my artwork out there and they say, oh, I love that. And I'm like, oh, I love the stuff you just posted last week. You should make more. Uh, it's cool with uh, with that's one of the things that I really like about phones in general and stuff is the, is the ways that we can uh, do things that previously would have been basically impossible or, you know, to, to be able to curate a uh, library of images, even on your Instagram, something that people do very unconsciously now almost is like really something that a long time ago would have, would have been amazing. I mean, it's, in part, it's like having a, a gallery of some kind uh, just displayed on in your digital space. It seems like a really cool, and and so you're kind of connecting the two, which which is kind of where I'm getting excited about the idea. That's cool. Yeah, thank you. It's it's really crazy how fast things move. Like, uh, it I it makes me think about memes when you say something that would be like just impossible a few years ago. Like, you know, the idea that these image macros would like, it would like appear in one place on the internet and then get shared a million times and you like change meta like eight times. And now it's <laughs> nearly indecipherable. Indecipher and like, I can say osteoporosis right now and like someone's going to laugh like somewhere like, you know, like it, it, it'll just happen. So I, we are living in a completely different world mm -hmm. than we were. And I, I think it is mostly because of these devices and art. Yeah, there's no sense in fighting it. It's going to be here for a long time. I don't see cell phones going away. You know, we're mm -hmm. not going to revert to the 80s anytime soon. So you might as well get with it. Well, <laughs> but it, it, it's funny because you also print a zine, which is yeah. like maybe some of the most back to the 80s <laughs> <laughs> thing I can imagine, like going out and putting out like pieces of paper that like people are supposed to stumble across and just read. What's kind of the... Uh, what what's the drive behind making something that is so uh, finite and like oh, destructible well okay here we go we'll go back to the journal entry those started so i've been doing the one buff scene for oh heck like a year and a half two years so i was in my graduate program and you have to take one uh high up class that's not in your uh, discipline area so i decided to do creative writing with robin becker Shout out, Robin. Hey. Uh, so she had me start doing these art journals. She was like, well, what do you want to do for our class? I was like, I don't know. What should, what should we do? So she told me to start doing an art journal every day, write down five things, and draw pictures to go with them. So at the end of our class, I had a journal entry, one of those uh, composition books, so fat. It was probably like two, three inches tall because I had like glued stuff in there. I had rhinestones. Mm -hmm. I had all kinds of stuff, leaves, you name it. It was in there. But it was so fun. And so I decided that I wanted to share that with other people. So I started making a zine. So I fold one piece of paper up, you know, in my little fancy way. And I journal entry. I put whatever I want to, whatever I'm feeling. I take social media memes and I put meme spotlights. I do music, whatever I'm listening to the most that month, I'll put it in there. So hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. that's how that started. I, th I think that's really an interesting form of exp like, especially cause it's not, um, like I've interacted with that a lot cause it just shows up where I work. So like <laughs> I read it, I've like read most of them, I think. And, um, they like, I've really noticed that it is not online. You know, like it, it's only if you're able to interact with it. And if someone, I've also had people like ask me for them, like, where can I get one? <laughs> it's happened at least three times now. And I've had to point them over by the phone for anyone who's familiar with the wine cafe. But I, I think the, the fact that there is like a forced scarcity there and that it's so like personal is there, there's something to that that is kind of like lost in all of this digital clutter, which like. I don't know. I, I feel as if sometimes like how every bit of data is collected makes a lot of things that were previously personal, like, you know, loving an image or a song, like extremely impersonal by, you know, turning it into a habit or something that can be tracked. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm not sure how that actually interfaces with the point, but <laughs> you know, I used to put some of my stuff online. People were like, Oh, you should get a bigger audience. You should definitely put it online for everyone to look at. 
And so I tried it. I think I still have like a floating Instagram for it and a Facebook page. But I haven't updated since the first few weeks of COVID. I think I put some dancing cowboys on there, but uh, nothing since. You know? mm. I do agree. I feel like the, the tangibility, finding this like beautiful, funny thing out in the middle of a pile of leaves or you know, under a bridge, that's so much more fun than going on your phone expecting to find media. Mm-hmm. So, Yeah, cool. certainly. And uh, I think that for something, because it... Also, if you you get the chance to read it, it it is funny and like oftentimes like personal, like there's some like there's like happiness and sadness and all kinds of things in there. So like it, it being in that position where you just find it, it's like a it's like a real trace of humanity in places where oftentimes you don't find them. Um, I think that that's pretty neat. Um, And that's it's really hard to get that across on like the the bustle of a scroll. For sure. For something full of fart jokes, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's fun. So where, uh, where do you decide or how do you decide where you're going to drop those off then? So I've got my regular spots. People like yeah. uh, habits. So I usually drop them at my favorite coffee shops. I drop them at my favorite watering hole, the bar. Um, every now and then I'll bring them somewhere else. Sometimes I'll go to the cities and I'll drop some in the bathroom. Sometimes I'll pop up to school and throw them in the guy's bathroom. Yeah. No one knew who was making them for the longest time because they were only in the guy's bathroom at school. So <laughs> that was pretty fun. That's a, that's a wonderful distribution platform. Like just throw it in the men's room. Like it'll go somewhere. <laughs> someone will find it. Yeah, that's fun. Yeah, I don't have like a predetermined. It's, you know, I print 50 and they go where they go. Mm, li- that's fun. I didn't know there was such a limited quantity. I have printed additionals, like when I go to a festival or if I go out of town and people I know mm-hmm. want some, I can go back. I keep the originals. So nice. Is it, It's all done by hand, though. Like you, you scan the image and then. Yeah, so it's one piece of paper, um, doodled front and back. I've usually got the cover. I've got jokes, um, journal entries, whatever. But, yeah, I handwrite the whole thing. Most of the time, I just go right in with a micron pen. Every now and then for a sketch, I'll start with the graphite and go over it. But once it's on there, it's on there. Well, I kind of want to, I kind of want to, like, pivot back to the the show at the 410 because there's some other stuff I want to talk about. There, there too, um... So this this probably I probably first interacted with this when I saw the piece that you had in the jury art show last year that I it, it really like kind of took me back because there was so much texture and like a lot going on and in the the teaser images I saw from this this show I, I see that there's a lot more of that going on still I don't know if you're using like where, where you're gathering this stuff but like what has you know had you bringing in that kind of uh, additional texture from I don't know, cloth or whatever you're using. Yeah, so I'll go back to that one. I think the first one that I put in the jury show last year was Ribbon and Lace. That was the title I picked at that time for it. But it's the watercolor paper, and I draw the image, then I put the ink down, and then I cut out the background, the negative space, and I hand sew in different material so it is really elaborate work it is very layered and textural um where i got some of the materials i used to be well before i got the grant money um i used to just be as thrifty as possible so i'd be cutting up t-shirts that didn't work cute underwear with like the little lacy bum you know whatever i could find i would put in the project because i liked that material now that i've gotten the grant though i don't have to cut up my own clothes to make my art i can actually go to (laughs) uh the art stores around town and kind of collect my color palettes as they go so hmm. so you mentioned uh with with some of that in particular that it's like a uh, removing negative space mm-hmm. for for someone who maybe hasn't seen much of your artwork can you uh i don't know maybe talk about that a little bit more or describe how you um how you go about creating like an image oh definitely so the imagery that i have is um It's all donated imagery. So I put a call out on social media platforms and to people that I know. And whoever feels comfortable, whoever feels comfortable sends me an image and I either draw it out or for something that's extremely elaborate, I might actually project that onto my paper. So I use 22 by 30 watercolor paper. Hmm. So once I have the image of the person on the surface, I ink it. 
So you can actually see the lines. You can see the details of the image that they sent me. And then anything that doesn't have any any sort of line work, or if it's blank space, I'll use an X-Acto knife and I'll cut the blank space out of the original image so you only see line work. Hmm. So that's where the color ends up being, is in the negative space. So the entire surface has information. It's just overladen with either drawings or flowers, watercolor, India ink washes, or fabric. Hmm. That's That sounds very cool. I think... I think I've only seen um, visual or photographs of it, so I guess maybe some of the the texture might not translate through very well. So we'll have to send people to the to the gallery to check it out. Yes, please. It's so much better in person. <laughs> That's can, cool. Can people touch it? That's like not allowed, right? <laughs> it's not encouraged. Oh, I decided to put them behind frames, so no, you cannot touch the <laughs> fabric. <laughs> uh. So, uh, what you've got a, a zine, zine, or zine, zine? zine. It's zine. like mini magazine. Yeah. You've got a zine that you put out, um, and this is a, a new show for you. Uh, are there any other avenues of your, your creative explorations and projects, or are those the two main ones? Oh, heck, I have so many. I don't even know if I can name them all. I just did the second year of the COVID color coded photography series online. Um, I also do hmm. my own drawings and paintings. I do a lot of animal portraits. I do commission work on the side. So those are a lot of fun. I love animals. So. Um, one more, I also do um, art tutoring for private families. So hi, Maya. She mm -hmm. told me to uh, tell her hi if I had the chance. <laughs> Shout out. Did you, you organize the color-coded that that's your, like your thing. I did. I did. I uh, started that last year, a few weeks into the um, shutdown. So everyone was at home going bonkers. Their kids are driving them nuts. So I decided to get silly and ask everyone else if they could get silly too. So do you want me to go into what that was? Yeah. I mean, I saw a ton of it and I had no idea who was behind it. I kind of, I thought it was like a large internet trend. So that's like, <laughs> you know, no, this was, is a cool surprise. Like, it was very local. Um, yeah, I was on my phone, like usual. And I had seen this really strange picture of a family. They all had super odd outfits on, but they were all blue. Like, they, the dad had, like, his blue outfit and, like, a blue mask, and the kids had their tutus and their cowboy boots all at the same time, and I loved it. So I posted that picture, and I posted, like, an event. I was like, we're doing this on Monday for one week straight, and everybody did it. They took their own photographs. We had one color of the day. And you had all day to gather everything in your house that was that one color. And mm. you would take the silliest photo you've ever taken in your life. And yeah, so I've, I've done that two years now. I think we're done. Hopefully, hopefully there's no shutdown next year. So it's not going to continue in absence of the shutdown? No, I think it lived its life. Oh, right on, right on. Mm. That's cool. It sounds like a fun little project. Yeah, I remember. I like. I I really thought that that was just like all the musicians doing the live streaming thing. There was just like all of those little trends. So it must have just been Mankato saturated enough. Where like I was yep. like, there it is. <laughs> cool. Well, um, I I'm I'm exhausted. My my reserve of questions. Um, if there if there was something that basically you wanted to tell the audience or like um just like anything about your your work or the project itself that you wanted the people who were going to show up to know just kind of before we like wrap up and do plugs maybe just uh get that out there and if there's not we can just uh kind of wind it down and tell people where to go well i can't think of anything uh too pertinent but i will say the projects do not uh look the same online they look so much better in person, way less glare. You know, you should really mm -hmm, go and mm -hmm. check it out. And that'll be showing at the 410 Project starting this Friday and going through... It'll go through the 22nd of August. Okay, cool. And where can people find you on the internet? Oh, Facebook. <laughs> I also have the uh, the Instagram, so just the two. I'm a simple gal. All right, cool. Well, we look forward to seeing it down there and uh, wish you the best with, with your show. Thank you. Right on.